Hey, yo, what's up guys? Zay here with another episode of Zay's Experience. Today we're going to be talking to you about some of the supplements that I use while doing a cut, how they've helped me out, and how they can potentially help you out. Whilst many of you have dabbled into the bodybuilding world, and some of you may have not, you've all potentially at one point in your life have tried to cut some weight one way or another. As you might have noticed while doing your cut, at some points it was pretty hard or it was really impossible actually to continue on with the diet whether it was because of the food you were eating, your mental stamina wasn't there, or your physical stamina wasn't there. These are all very common problems that come up when you're doing a cut, especially if it's your first time doing it or you don't have much experience doing so. So the supplements that I'm gonna be mentioning right now are not only gonna help you mentally, but also will help you look better at the end of your cut whilst making it easy to go through the entire process. Again, I'm not recommending anything. I cannot go ahead and recommend anything Having said that, I've used these supplements whilst on cuts and little by little through trial and error, I have added things on and it has definitely helped me out in the process and hopefully it can help you out. So the first thing that I'm gonna be talking about is creatine. Everybody knows creatine or most of you people out there know creatine and, you, and the first thing that you would probably say is why would you take creatine on a cut? For most of you who don't know, creatine actually retains water. 95% of this water is retained in muscles, which is what makes you look a little bit more or it's the water that's being retained that helps you look a little bit more vascular a little bit more striated when you go ahead and consume this this also helps with ATP creation this is one of your muscles preferred forms of energy so it's actually a big big deal but the reason why I take creatine is because it helps me get through my workouts a lot better. So it's it's actually, it's energy guys. It's energy for your muscles. Not only that, it also helps with cognitive function. So if you guys are having like a really hard time with mental clarity, memory and stuff like that, creatine has proven to help out with that as well. Also creatine prevents the degradation of your muscle. So if you're going through maybe a potentially catabolic state, which just basically means that your body is basically getting rid of muscle, it can potentially stop that degradation of muscle that you've been working hard to maintain. So that is super important right there. It also helps out with endurance, which just like I mentioned, ATP, it's one of the first things that gets used once you start doing like very explosive movements such as sprints and stuff like that, which I definitely do. And potentially if you're doing like Olympic lifting or really heavy stuff, this is exactly what you need. Creatine will definitely make the cut a lot easier. Now, I cannot go ahead and recommend any amounts, but all the amounts, it's the amount of stuff that I use. So the dosage that I use is depending on how I look, cause creatine can potentially make you puffy if you are one of those people that just kind of reacts a little bit more to it or just are a bit more sensitive to it. I take five grams of creatine per day and I also eat a bunch of meat. So that also has a good amount of creatine in it. So I don't worry much about my creatine consumption, but this is something that I definitely use and I definitely see when I don't take creatine especially if I take it for a week and then I or two and then I stop fully taking creatine I definitely see the difference especially on my explosive lifts also something like a little bit of extra that is actually very important whilst being on a cut like I said your body can go a little bit catabolic so creatine can definitely aid you in the in the process of protein synthesis which is very important to make muscle and if you're cutting and everything is is optimal and you're doing everything right and you can potentially put on muscle which is very hard this can definitely help out to create muscle whilst even on a cut so creatine is the first supplement five grams is what i take again do your due diligence go ahead and, and if you're going to go ahead and try this i would start off with two to three grams that is something that i've noticed sometimes if i cut a little bit too deep uh, i can definitely see that two to three grams will work perfect for me the next one is fish oils Fish oils are awesome for many, many reasons, but again, for cognitive function, you definitely need this if you're gonna be doing it. EPA and DHA are very important to your brain, so much so that there's plenty of studies, then this might be a little bit of a, on, like on a different side, uh, a little bit sidetracked, but just so that you can get an, an idea of how important fish oils in general, women in utero, when they had a baby in utero, these women were receiving a certain amount of fish oils, and those women that received the higher amounts of fish oils were versus the ones that weren't given any fish oils, the kids that were born from those pregnancies had a very, very, I think it was almost a 40% increase in mental acuity and just overall 
brain development. So that is massive. So that just so you can get an idea of how this could potentially help you whilst being on a cut, especially since you're getting rid of a lot of fat, you also need good fats, healthy fats, you know, more of the omega threes and less of the omega sixes where, which are definitely correlated to being way more inflammatory and our diets, unfortunately on the sad diet, the standard American diet, we have a bunch of. So, and once again, this definitely helps with building muscle, helps with protein synthesis. So this is very, very big. So both on the mental side and on the building muscle side, this can definitely help. And if you're thinking, why would you wanna put on more muscle while you're cutting weight or fat? In my case, this is a prolonged lifestyle. So I have no rush to go ahead and kill 10 pounds of, of body fat or 15 pounds of body fat. This is a lifestyle that I'm gonna be sustaining for a prolonged period of time. And during that prolonged period of time, if I can do anything to help with putting on some more muscle, that definitely means that my caloric expenditure is gonna have to go up, which is something that I want, especially on a cut. So I'm still gonna be at a deficit by just trying to put on muscle whilst cutting. So cutting is the main goal, but if you can put on a little bit of muscle whilst doing that cut, that is just basically a plus that will help you be in a small caloric deficit. And plus, if you're trying to cut and use fish oils, one of the bigger things that can definitely help you is that we do know that thermogenesis increases in the body when you consume fish oils, which helps you burn a little bit more brown fat versus white adipose tissue. It elevates your core temperature, which um, signals the turning on of brown fat, which helps you burn fat in turn. So fish oils, I'll definitely take anywhere from two to three grams a day. Um, obviously this can get a little expensive, but do your due diligence on one company. I use Nordic, Nordic is a great company. Again, I'm not sponsored by any of these people that I'm gonna be mentioning today. Nordic is great. And as for the creatine, you can go ahead and buy. There's multiple companies out there of creatine. Creatine monohydrate works perfect. It's one of the most researched products out there. Now the following one, nobody's a stranger to this, protein. Why would you wanna take protein? Let's not, I don't wanna to dive too much into this one, but protein, obviously, just like I mentioned, we want to go ahead and create muscle. That way our caloric deficit increases by us just having a little bit more muscle mass. And also when you cut, you also wanna have something good to reveal. Whilst you're in the cutting phase, a lot of people tend to lose muscle. Not a lot, but a small amount of it. And it can definitely help you keep on muscle. And you guys know the many, many benefits of protein. We don't have to go into this one. Just get a good protein supplement, something that's very very clean. I particularly use Isopure. I think it's a really good brand. They have some really good values. And I also think that an isolate is actually the, the best thing that you can be consuming if you're going to be taking uh, a shake as a meal replacement here or there. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that with the next supplement. So protein, I take anywhere from 25 to 30 grams. That works perfectly fine, but I don't take it alone if I'm gonna be using it, which leads me into the next supplement, which is EAAs. Not to be confused with BCAAs, EAAs are essential amino acids versus BCAAs being branch chain amino acids. I don't wanna go in too much into depth into what the difference is, but EAAs definitely help out. And one of the main things is because it has leucine. Leucine has been found to almost be able to 4X the protein synthesis process. And for all those that might not understand that, it's like, oh, what the hell are you talking about, Zade? You are creating, or it can help out the body to create way more muscle, four times more muscle than it would if it didn't get leucine. EAAs contain leucine. Not only does it just help with protein synthesis or the creation of muscle, but it also helps with mood and sleep. A lot of people take these for mood and sleep. I go ahead and take them just for that as well. It really helps me out to sleep a lot better and it helps out, helps me out with my mood, especially if I'm doing a diet, sometimes I can get a little bit, <laughs> I can lose my temper and that's usually because of the fat loss. Anything that's gonna help me with my mood or help me with my sleep is very much welcome. So the way I take it, just like I told you before, along with protein, I can either take it 30, 60, 90 minutes after my workout. That's when I go ahead and I take the EAAs with the protein. That way, once again, it can go ahead and help that protein synthesis process and overall create more muscle and at the same time help with recovery. So that's the way I take EAAs. The next one is highly debated amongst bodybuilders and people who believe or may not believe that this might aid. I take it because it aids me. Beta alanine helps me out with better pumps 
and that's that's very important to me whenever I'm working out because if I'm not feeling it that day and it's barely the first workout that's telling me a lot that's telling me that either my body's not ready and that I'm gonna be potentially missing out of day or that I'm gonna have to be taking it very easily with just just very relaxed because I do Muay Thai I do Olympic lifting and I do running and if my body's not ready in either the running session or the Muay Thai session or maybe Olympic lifting I know that it's gonna have to be a really calm day and it's just gonna have to be either me walking somewhere to go ahead and get my calories in and out or get my caloric expenditure to the place where it has to be or I might just even have to sit out the entire day. I can potentially go ahead and do something and force myself but I rather feel like I am in really, really good shape and that my muscles are ready to go especially if I slept well and I ate well. So that's why beta alanine is very important to me. Also, a big thing, it helps clear out lactate. People think that humans create lactic acid. You can go ahead and look this up. Humans do not create lactic acid. They, we can't, we do not create it. We create lactate, which is different. Actually on the Huberman um, Lab podcast, which I'll link to down below, they go ahead and they talk about how, <laughs> about the entire process and it's actually quite complicated but we create lactate, not lactic acids. But it, basically what it is, it's just this little inflammation that gets accumulated in your muscles. So that gets cleared out a lot faster. It's what makes you fierce, feel sore the next day. That's what lactate is. So that gets accumulated in your muscles and by having beta alanine, it helps you clear that out. I believe anywhere from 30 to 40% faster, according to some of the research. That for me right there is huge. And also there's more and more evidence coming out that with beta alanine, you can definitely speed up protein synthesis as well. So that is also a plus. Whether it does happen or not, this is the biggest place where most bodybuilders and nutritionists tend to disagree. Some say that it might help with it. Some say that it might not help with it. Whatever the case may be, I go ahead and I take anywhere from three to four grams of this on the daily prior to my workout. The reason why I do that, it's the one supplement that helps you get that tingling feeling. This is what, it, this is that supplement. If you guys have ever taken like C4 or something that is highly, that with a lot of caffeine and you feel that it, you get tingles all over your body, that's what this supplement is. So if I've been highly caffeinated throughout the day, I only go ahead and take three grams. If I haven't, I'll be fine with five grams. But I gauge this again, this is kind of a little bit more on on the limb, but I know it works for me and I've seen better gains when I do use beta alanine versus when I don't use beta alanine. The next one, L-carnitine. Highly used by all bodybuilders out there or by people that know anything about the supplement industry. L-carnitine helps out with ATP creation, basically energy for your muscles. Helps with endurance, helps with recovery, and it helps with fat loss. It is used highly by most bodybuilders out there. Some of them take 1,000 milligrams, some of them take 2,000 milligrams. Like there is basically no no daily recommendation for this, but different people can go ahead and experiment with this. I go ahead and I just take 1000 milligrams of L-carnitine, liquid L-carnitine. I know it helps out. And I know a lot of people worry about all the other factors um, that come along with it. Sometimes some people say due to inflammation and stuff like that, that they don't want to take it. I see some really substantial fat loss with this, especially in accumulation with all the other stuff that I've been talking about. Like none of these supplements on their own are meant to do anything big or anything huge. I really believe that it's the compound effect that helps out. And it's no different with this. If all my meals and everything is in place, this should definitely help out. It's just that little 1%, but 1% keeps on adding up over a long period of time. So L-carnitine can definitely help you burn off fat give you more energy and can aid with endurance and recovery. Something that's actually super important, especially right now. Vitamin D, I think is a highly overlooked supplement that a lot of people don't take. And I'll say this right away. I take anywhere from 5,000 IUs to 10,000 IUs. When it's winter time, especially right now it's winter, I take 10,000 IUs. When it's regular kind of season and I have plenty of sun and I go outside, I go ahead and only take 5,000 IUs. But I see a really big difference in my mood. I feel like I'm less prone to getting sick. You know how sometimes 
sometimes you wake up and you feel like you might catch something. That doesn't happen to me as often when I supplementing with vitamin D, especially in higher amounts. It also helps with leucine. And just like I told you guys, leucine is highly important for protein synthesis with the activation of leucine, which then helps out with mTOR, which then can help you have a better workout, which can also help with protein synthesis. So this really helps out with your immune system. This should not be taken lightly, but it also helps out with protein synthesis and helping you have a better workout. And also something that cannot, I think cannot be overstated, it helps out greatly with mood. Once again, I'll take anything during a cut to help me better my mood because I know my fat loss will make me a little bit grumpy. Great little supplement if you ask me. The next one is Alpha GPC. Alpha GPC helps out boost your cognitive levels. And I know when I'm doing a cut, uh, the first thing to go is my memory. My memory kind of starts getting a little, like it's not the best. I tend to be very forgetful of stuff. Recalling stuff every now and then can get a little hard. So, and I usually tend to have eggs and that's how I usually get my choline when I'm not doing a diet, but obviously in the diet, I, I do have fats, but not in the amount that, would, that I would usually would if I was doing some heavy Olympic lifting, just like going for massive size and gains, you know? That's when I usually go ahead and have a lot of eggs and that's where my cognitive function is at 100%. But since I'm not doing that, this definitely helps me out. And hopefully it can provide a boost to your daily routine if you go ahead and decide to put Alpha GPC on this. And the last one is electrolytes. The reason why I went ahead and put on electrolytes here is because they are super important for many things. And the supplement that I take is by Trace Minerals. I spoke about it in this channel many many times and it has boron sodium potassium magnesium sulfate chloride those are super important especially if you're doing stuff where you're sweating a lot and you require to replenish those levels again it all depends on your cells being properly activating or actually working properly and so you need to be able to replenish those levels of sodium, potassium, magnesium. And not only does it help with replenishing the levels and helping your cells function the way they're supposed to, but it also helps you sleep. It helps with your mood and it also helps with cramps. If you guys are having problems and you're trying to get more potassium into your diet and don't know how, electrolytes are a good way to go ahead and do this. A lot of people try to eat a little bit more avocado to do that, it's high in potassium, bananas, but as we all know, they are high in carbohydrates. Well, bananas are high, high in carbohydrates because of the sugar and avocados are high in fats. So if you're worrying about any of those, this might be the other way that you can go ahead and maybe abstain from eating those and potentially still getting what you need into your diet. That is all for today. Just letting you know some of the stuff that could potentially help you. Please go ahead and push that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Press that like button, you guys know the drill and leave a comment down there if you have any questions or anything that you would like to get over to me or any supplements that I might have overlooked that you know could potentially help out on a weight on your weight loss journey or my weight loss journey. But in any case guys, Zay out.